So today we're going to take a little stroll through the woods and see what kind of critters have been stirring around overnight. If you live in an area where you have the opportunity, getting out after a fresh snow is one of the best ways that I know to develop the fundamentals of tracking that you'll need to follow animals under less than perfect conditions. So let's get out here and see what we can find. <laughs> Identifying a track, even when we've got really good conditions like we've got right now, isn't always as straightforward as just looking at a track and then comparing that against a, a field manual. And this is a really good example here. Uh, this track has been snowed in and there's, there's no detail in the bottom of this thing. But I've got a couple of clues that are going to help me identify this. Uh, one of them is the gate pattern, which is the, the pattern of the tracks themselves uh, and how they're arranged. Um, in, re in relation to one another. And the other one is uh, habitat association. I'm on the edge here between a field and a thicket right here. Now even though I can't look at an individual track and, and identify it, I, I know this is a cottontail track based on those two things, the track pattern and the habitat association. Uh, cottontails tend to be have group tracks and they're kind of a galloper, galloping hopper. Um, if that's a technical term, I don't know, but uh, we're going to call it that. But cottontails tend to put down their two front feet um, diagonal from one another and then they'll bring their rear feet up and their rears will hit in front of their front feet. And that's exactly what we've got here. Um, so the habitat association, uh, cottontails tend to hang out on these edges a lot of times, uh, really close to cover. And right here, I know that that's the only rabbit species we have. If we were a little bit higher elevation, we'd get into some snowshoes, but I've never seen a snowshoe here. Um, it's not completely out of the question, but I've never seen one. And this track pattern is way too small for a snowshoe anyway. Now I can tell that this, this rabbit uh, is moving this way, and he's, he's close to cover here, but once he gets up here, he gets out into the open. And what you'll notice is when we look up here, is the the distance between these groups of tracks gets really long and so here I think he's feeling pretty comfortable he's close to cover but when he gets out in here to the open uh, he's picking up speed and I can tell that by the distance between those uh, groups of tracks we do have some horned owls that kind of hang out around here sometimes and I'm pretty sure he knows it here we've got some more cottontail tracks in here and you can here you can really see it well you've got the front feet planted right here you get back feet a little bit ahead of it. The next group of tracks is right here. Front feet, back feet. So if you can get down underneath some uh, cover like this, oftentimes it's a good place to find a really good distinct track. I've got a, a lot of really clear tracks right here. I've got coyotes that are running up and down this frozen creek. I've got cottontails in here. And I've even got a mouse track over here. You can see He's got uh, really similar to a, a cottontail, actually, but there's a little, uh, it's a very small group um, of tracks, and there's a drag mark uh, where he was dragging his tail. Now, you might be asking yourself, how does this guy know that this is a coyote and not, say, a bobcat? Well, there's a couple of things that I'm looking for. One is claws. Uh, here you can see that claws are registering in these tracks. That's a good indicator, but it's not a dead giveaway because oftentimes on a cat track, well, I shouldn't say oftentimes, sometimes on a cat track, um, claws will register depending on the terrain and what the cat's doing. One dead giveaway that this is a canine and not a cat is the shape of this palm, the, the uh, planter pad right here, the big pad back here, inner digital pad. On a canine, the front of this track will have a single lobe and on a cat track there will be two lobes up here. So here we've got a, a pretty interesting gait pattern here. This is a coyote. Now normally coyotes would move in what they call a direct register. 
meaning that when they place their front foot down and lift that up, they'll bring their hind and place it directly in that front track. Now, this isn't showing that pattern. This is actually what they call an overstep walk, uh, meaning that when, an, when the coyote brought his front foot up and his hind foot forward, he actually overstepped his front track and placed his hind foot in front of the front foot. Now what that would indicate is an animal that's moving a little bit faster than a normal walk. Um, now the way that I can tell uh, the difference between um, front and back feet here is on animals that have a larger front end, so like deer, uh, elk, um, coyotes, cats, things like that, their front feet will tend to be a little bit bigger in order to support that mass up towards the front end. Now you get animals like bears, uh, rabbits, raccoons, mice, things like that that have a larger rear ends, their rear feet are going to be bigger to support that larger mass towards the rear end. Now I just tucked in here underneath some small dug fur here and I've got, this place is littered with tracks in here and they're paired tracks with drag marks uh, just like the, the mouse track we found. These are a little bit different. These are bird tracks in here and I'm not sure what species uh, right now, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to pull out a field manual. Now I've got to take a minute and give a shout out to the fellow that wrote this book, Mark Elbrock. Um, I, I've, this is the only book I've ever found on bird tracks and sign, uh, and it's very well done. And got a raven up there. Um, you know, looking looking these tracks up in here, we've only got a, a small handful of birds that overwinter in this area, and dark-eyed junco is one of them. And that's what I'm putting my money on here. These are paired tracks; they're hopping tracks, meaning that the 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 pairs are side by side or nearly side by side, as opposed to a skipping track, which uh, Marks broke that down for us, would mean that one foot is in front of the other, um, and they do not overlap. Uh, which would be in, more indicative of a uh, song sparrow, which is another one of the birds that we have uh, that overwinter here. We have towhees around here too, but they're a little bit bigger. Oh well, they don't like me. Well, that's all we're going to have time for today, but in future episodes we're going to get more in depth into tracking. Uh, we're going to talk about tracking in less than perfect conditions, uh, but if you have the opportunity, like I said before, to get out um, in, in conditions like we have now, uh, following up tracks and trying to figure out what animals we're doing, IDing tracks, uh, looking at gait patterns, all those things are going to help you to develop those fundamental skills that you're going to need. you got to crawl before you can walk. See you next time.